Ankle pain is not random. The location of where you have pain can serve as a diagnostic clue to the underlying problem. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine doctor, and after treating countless athletes and active individuals, I've seen just how powerful understanding the location of pain can be in diagnosing and treating ankle issues. In this video, I'll break down different types of ankle pain by location and show you how pinpointing the source can and help you find the right treatment. Let's begin with pain along the front of the ankle, specifically right at the joint line. This type of pain is often due to joint issues such as ankle osteoarthritis or cartilage injuries, including osteochondral defects. While ankle osteoarthritis is much less common than arthritis in the knees or hips, it's still a significant source of ankle pain. Repeated ankle sprains can damage the cartilage over time, leading to chondral defects. In addition, repetitive trauma and the resulting instability in the ankle can accelerate cartilage wear and tear, contributing to arthritis. Bone spurs may also develop along the joint, causing anterior impingement syndrome. The main goal of treatment is to strengthen and stabilize the ankle to prevent further damage. Corticosteroid injections or platelet-rich plasma injections may be used to help manage pain and reduce symptoms. Pain in the front and inner part of the ankle may be caused by tibialis anterior tendonitis. This muscle plays a key role in lifting the foot upwards. Tendonitis can develop from overuse or repetitive stress, often triggered by activities like running, hiking, or high-impact sports. Over time, these repetitive motions can cause micro-tears in the tendon, leading to pain and weakness. The main goal of treatment is to rehabilitate the tendon with targeted stretches and exercises. It's also crucial to evaluate footwear and consider using orthotics to improve foot mechanics and reduce strain on the tendon. Pain in the front outer part of the ankle is often caused by an injury to the anterior talofibular ligament. This is the most commonly injured ligament during an inversion ankle sprain where the foot rolls underneath the ankle joint. Such injuries stretch or partially tear the ATFL, and in more severe cases, the ligament can completely tear, leading to ankle instability. A rehabilitation program is essential for proper healing of the ligament, helping to restore strength and stability. Additionally, Rehab improves proprioception, which enhances balance and coordination of the foot, reducing the risk of future injuries. If we move to the outside of the ankle, pain in this area is often due to peroneal tendonitis. The peroneus longus and brevis muscles play a key role in pointing the foot downward, which is plantar flexion, and rotating it outwards, which is eversion. Repetitive stress and overuse, especially during high impact sports or activities like walking and hiking, on uneven surfaces can weaken these tendons leading to pain. Treatment focuses on correcting foot mechanics and strengthening the tendons to provide better support and prevent further injury. Now let's move to the inside of the ankle and discuss posterior tibial tendonitis. The posterior tibial tendon plays a crucial role in supporting the arch of the foot as well as pointing the foot downward and inwards. Overuse or repetitive stress can weaken this tendon resulting in pain. As the tendon continues to weaken, the arch of the foot may begin to collapse, leading to a condition called posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. This is the most common cause of acquired flat feet and chronic pain along the inside aspect of the foot. Treatment focuses on supporting the arch and strengthening the tendon through targeted exercises and physical therapy. In more advanced cases, immobilization with a walking boot or even a cast may be required for several months, and in some instances, surgical intervention may be necessary. Another condition affecting the inside aspect of the ankle is tarsal tunnel syndrome. Similar to carpal tunnel syndrome in the wrist, this condition occurs when the posterior tibial nerve is pinched as it passes through the tarsal tunnel. When the nerve is compressed, it can cause pain, numbness, and tingling that radiates into the heel, 
arch, and even the toes. Treatment typically includes anti-inflammatory medications, orthotics to correct foot alignment, and cortisone injections to alleviate symptoms. In more severe or persistent cases, surgical release may be necessary to decompress the nerve and provide relief. A third cause of medial ankle pain is a deltoid ligament injury. This usually occurs from an eversion injury where the ankle rolls outwards. Since the deltoid ligament is very strong, injuries often result from high energy trauma such as sports injuries or falls. Symptoms include pain, swelling, and instability on the inside of the ankle. These injuries are often severe and patients typically struggle with bearing weight and walking right after the injury. Deltoid ligament injuries are frequently associated with high ankle sprains where the syndesmotic ligaments connecting the tibia and the fibula above the ankle are also damaged. Treatment typically involves rest and a short period of immobilization, followed by physical therapy to restore mobility and strength. In more severe cases, surgical intervention may be required. Now let's move to the back of the ankle and discuss the Achilles tendon. Pain from the Achilles tendon can occur in two areas, the mid-substance and in its insertion. Achilles tendinopathy is caused by repetitive stress or overuse of the tendon, and it's particularly common among runners. Patients often experience pain, stiffness, or swelling in the tendon, which worsens with activity. Mid-substance tendinopathy affects the middle portion of the tendon about two to six centimeters above the heel. Insertional tendinopathy occurs where the tendon attaches to the heel bone and is often associated with calcifications or bone spurs. And while both types of tendinopathy can be difficult to treat, mid-substance tendinopathy typically responds better due to a slightly better blood supply in this area compared to the insertion point at the heel bone. Treatment focuses on reducing stress on the Achilles tendon using heel pads, orthotics, anti-inflammatory medications, and rehabilitation exercises to strengthen and support the tendon. Newer treatments such as platelet-rich plasma injections and extracorporeal shockwave therapy are also gaining attention for their potential to accelerate recovery. A quick mention on accessory bones. These are extra bones that develop in some individuals due to incomplete fusion during bone development. Most of the time, Time, accessory bones are completely harmless and go unnoticed, but occasionally they can contribute to ankle pain. The most common accessory bones associated with ankle pain include the os trigonum, the accessory navicular bone, and the os peroneum. The os trigonum occurs in about 25% of the population and is an accessory bone located behind the talus. It can cause pain when it's pinched between the heel and the ankle during activities that involve pointing the foot downwards. This type of post Posterior impingement is common in dancers, soccer players, or anyone who frequently performs repetitive ankle movements. An accessory navicular bone is found in up to 20% of the population and is located near the navicular bone on the inside of the foot. It can cause pain and inflammation when it presses against tight-fitting shoes or when the posterior tibial tendon rubs against it, leading to pain on the inside of the ankle and the foot. The os peroneum, found in up to 25% of the population, is located within the peroneus longus tendon on the outside of the foot. This accessory bone can become irritated causing pain along the outside of the ankle. Treatment for irritated and inflamed accessory bones is often successful with a combination of rest, anti-inflammatory medications, and orthotics along with proper fitting shoes. In more severe cases, corticosteroid injections or platelet-rich plasma injections may help reduce pain and inflammation. If these options don't provide relief, surgical removal of the accessory bone may be necessary to restore function and alleviate pain. Understanding the specific location of your ankle pain is the first step toward effective treatment and relief. If you're ready to begin an ankle strengthening and rehabilitation program, I have the perfect solution for you. Watch this next video where I guide you through a simple yet highly effective five-minute ankle exercise routine. It's a great way to start building strength and improve improving the health of your ankle. Thanks for watching.